G'day folks, check this out. There's my motorbike. I've done a clutch in my car and it's booked in to get fixed in the next couple of weeks. So for now I'm on the motorbike. I've got my NS1's fishing rod. I bought this because it's a two piece. The Venom's only a one piece. I needed something I could break down and put it in my backpack. So I bought my NS1's with, a, with an Abu Garcia Revo SX. And I'm starting off with a Bassman spinnerbait and I'm going cod fishing on my motorbike. I love adventure. I have a sense for adventure and I've put my helmet and my jacket over here away from the fence just in case any nosy old cows come along and have a look. But I tell you what folks, I haven't got the security of my trusty old gumboots tonight because I would have looked like a bit of a dag riding through town with my gumboots on on my motorbike. So it's late in the season, it's here hit and miss time of year, I might catch something, I might not. But I'm having fun. I've just knocked off a 25 hour shift and I just need, I have got a craving that I need to feed and that is a Murray Cod craving. So even if I don't catch a fish, I'm going to go a long way to feeding that craving. I can't help but think that at any moment now, oh, <laughs> I was just going to say I can't help but think that at any moment now, I'm going to stand on a tiger snake. Well, I did, but he's not home. Look at that. That is a tiger snake skin. Well, actually, I'm only assuming it's a tiger snake skin because that's the main species of snake that I see out here. It could be a black snake. It's hard to tell just by the skin. I'm 99% sure it's a tiger, though, just by the scale patterns. <laughs> yeah, give me a fright. I was just about to say, I'm almost certain that I'm about to stand. Any minute now, I'm going to stand on a tiger snake. Got him. Yeah, yeah, I sit on the sink. I paused it to let it sink. And he, he's come along and just engulfed it. He has taken that little Bassman DT. It's quite a nice little Murray cod actually. Oh uh, yeah. I'll just swap hands with the lanyard here. So I wet my right hand. He's quite a nice little Murray cod. Caught on the Bassman DT spinnerbait. I was only just thinking to myself, I've never actually caught a fish along here, but you'll notice how he is engulfed the entire soft plastic, the stinger hook and the front hook. The reason being, he hit it on the sink. So as it's sinking, he's able to open his mouth and go, and just inhale a whole heap of water, the lure and the whole lot. And that's what he's done. He's inhaled that. He hasn't just came and nipped at it. He's actually inhaled it with the hope of swallowing it. He's done a pretty good job. It is a nice little Murray Cod. Somewhere in the 40 to, probably around about the 45, maybe even mid to high 40s. At a guess, 45 centimetres would be a pretty good guess, I think. Rightio, folks, there's my nice little Murray Cod. Just about to release him. I'm going to spear him into the water. See ya, buddy. Quite often you, you put fish in and you swim them backwards and forwards and stuff like that. That's a good thing for fish that are stressed. That fish wasn't out of the water very long, and he's not too stressed. Obviously, he's going to be stressed. He's just been caught by a fishing line, but he's not going to be too stressed. He's not, his gills aren't flared out. He's not panicking. He's right to go. And sometimes by just spearing them back in, it gets the water moving through their gills really quickly and brings them back to life. And it also gets them down to the depth where they were at when they took the lure. So don't be... Uh, don't be afraid just to spear the fish back into the water like that from time to time because it doesn't hurt them. What's an astronaut's favourite board game? Moonopoly. <laughs> <laughs>